Now let's talk about functions now. So function is somehow describing you a relationship between input and output. Because you know it is taking you from this input to the output, so that's why there should be some sort of relationship that is established between input and output. So for example, I have f of x is equal to y, so this means that x is my my input. And then f is applied, which is a function over here, and that is giving me y that is the output of that function. So this means that x is my domain. So domain means that the things that you are taking and giving it as an input. And range would be what you are getting at the end of the day. So that would be a y over here for this particular case, okay? So domain can be anything over here, and then range can be anything over here as far as uh, the, the functions are concerned. Um, now, you can see this, this x is somehow the argument of the function over here. You know, and you could see there is only one argument. And you can have multiple arguments as well. You can have x, y, you can have x, y, z as well, and you can have different arguments as well. So you, you generally call this as arbitrary. So this is somehow telling you the number of arguments that you can take into, into, your, into your function. So you, you can generally call the, the one argument function as unary function. So this means that it would be taking only one argument at a time. So it would look something like this, which is f of a. And if I say minus a, this is one function that is taking only one argument, which is a over here. You know, it is commonly known as prefix notation because you are putting your, your, your operator minus before any sort of argument, which is a over here. Okay, so these kind of you know, functions are known as unary functions. Um, then we can have binary as well. You, you know, and they are taking two arguments a, a, at a time. Okay, that is a, b. Now, a, b is pair over here. And I told you this could be represented by the cross product of two, two sets. This is what exactly coming from the cross product that you are getting a pair a, b over here. And the very commonly used function can be a plus b. Now I have two arguments. One is a, other is b, and then the function is plus function. So which is somehow adding both of these, of these numbers, a and b. So since plus is coming in between both of these variables, so this is somehow known as infix notation. Uh, this is in between both of these operators over here. Um, and then we can have k array function as well. This k can be 3, 4, 5, 6, up to so on and so forth. You know, and for the case of this function, which is h of a, b, c, d, you have a k is equal to 4. Now, it can be any number of arguments that you can have. More into details of these functions, so we can have predicates as well. Now, if you talk about predicates, guys, so this is somehow more simplified version. I would say this is more um, specialized version of the function. You know, in the case of functions, we know that we can have any sort of domain. We can have any sort of range as well. So you, you, you have seen range is having some sort of natural numbers as well. You know, but when you talk about predicates, it can have only true and false as its range. You can't have numbers over there. So, for example, if I say I have, you know, 2 plus 3, I can't declare this as predicate, you know, because this would be returning me 5. That is not a Boolean. That is not either true or false. So, predicate would be the only function that is giving you true or false at the end of the day. Now, you would be eager to look at some examples of the predicates. I can give you examples as well. So, one uh, example is P of X. Okay, so X is a parrot. So p of x is a predicate and it's saying x is a parrot. So it can be either parrot or it cannot be a parrot. You know, you can select some words out of that and then you have to check if it is representing a parrot or not. So you would ultimately be ended up with true or false. You can't have two, you can't have three, you can't have a, b, c or any sort of range for the case of predicate. So this is somehow the difference between the generalized function and then predicate that you can have. And likewise, you can have another function odd that takes any natural number and check if it's odd or even. Okay, so for example, if I have odd of 4, so that would return me false because 4 is not an odd number. Now, if we talk about the, the number of arguments that we can have over here, what is the arbitrary uh, of this, uh, um, this predicate? So what would you say about that? Sorry? Unary? Yes, yes. So that would be somehow unary. So it means that number of arguments are equal to 1 for this predicate. Now, one question comes in your mind is that can we have more than one arguments as well for the predicate? I would say yes, you can have more than one arguments for that as well. So, for example, this is a predicate which says 
B of X, Y, Z. And this is somehow modeling Y sits between X and Z. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. So this can either return true or false. So this means that you can have multiple arguments for the predicate as well. You know, the same things happens, uh, the, the one was happening for the functions. But the important thing is that here you have restricted your range. You're only selecting true or false. You can't come up with some sort of numbers or strings or vectors at the end of the day. And if you talk about the number of arguments, so there would be somehow three over here. So this is known as ternary predicate, I would say. 